Welcome to the Holly Hibbard Leadership Podcast, your go-to source for actionable insights, practical advice, and inspiring stories to help you lead with faith-filled purpose at work and at home. If you're looking to equip, empower, and encourage yourself to thrive in an ever-changing world, you're in the right place. I'm Holly Hibbard, and with over 20 years of experience as a science teacher, leadership coach, entrepreneur, and relationship mentor, I understand the challenges and growth opportunities that come with pursuing your passion. Whether you're chasing career goals, taking entrepreneurial leaps, or finally reaching for those long postponed ambitions, I'm here to help. So let's get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations and explore ways you can lead your family, lead your life, and find your calling with intention and faith. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. I know it's been a minute. We went camping last week as a family and got to say, I had not been on a vacation in about two years So it was nice to have a getaway to be with our friends and I had no signal. So even if I wanted to work, which I was planning on it, I couldn't. So now I am back. I've returned. I have more clarity in my mind. And with that, today I wanted to chat with you why life is harder when people change. And I'm inspired to record this episode today because... I was scheduled to have a Zoom call this morning with one of my best friends on the planet. Her name is Liz. Hello, Lizzie. And we had to reschedule because she has two kids under four and they're both sick. And she just traveled the world in the month of June and she's tired. The kids are sick and that is life. So what does this have to do with why life is harder when people change. It got me thinking, wow, if I were to rewind three years ago, even five or six years ago, because her and I met about a decade ago, and think about what our life was like then and what things troubled us, what things kept us busy, what things left us feeling exhausted, it is so vastly different than what we are experiencing right now. In fact, I know, and I can speak for myself, and I also know that she probably would say the same, years ago, we both wanted life with a family. And prior to her having her kids and prior to myself getting married in 2023 and having a child as a result of that now, um, I know that we, as full-time entrepreneurs, business women, business owners, coaches, high level coaches. That was the passion and the purpose that drove us. And these dreams we had were so massive and real and we knew they were going to happen. And man, oh man, we are both now in a season of our life where, oh my goodness, I couldn't even have imagined back then that we could not have had a conversation uh, for 30 minutes. However, I also am living the same thing where there are times where I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I know I want to catch up with my friends so badly and I am dead tired or, you know, my daughter is sick or something is going on with activities and who knows what. So things have just shifted so much in our lives and it got me thinking about this reasoning of why life is harder when people change. And so in the example I'm giving you so far, these are changes that are the dreams that she had and I had and our dreams came true. We ended up in marriages that we wanted to be in with committed partners that want to work on the relationship consistently and grow. We ended up mothers. Both of us are girl moms. They're so much. We have our homes. We have our businesses still. And so when I say change, it doesn't automatically mean that the changes in life are disastrous or traumatic or terrible things have happened. And I'm going to highlight that for you today also, because I have been very transparent with you so far that 2023 was one of the most transformative years of my life and it was exceptionally 
difficult. It wasn't until we just came out of this vacation camping with no signal (laughs) and being with people that I really saw with clear vision. Wow, that was so tough what I just came through. And I had built up so much stress and the amount of time now it's going to take to decompress on the other side of a new marriage, a new home, a new family, my mother's cancer diagnosis, my mother passing, us having our wedding, uh, selling my mom's house and cleaning it out. Oh, just all the things at one time, going from being a full-time entrepreneur to being an employee for the first time in a decade. So much change. So change, first and foremost, it is normal for everyone. And if we do not allow ourselves and others to accept that, if we automatically assume that I am going to be in the same place a couple years from now, that's like boring. First of all, I don't get that. Like my, (laughs) it's like I have this insatiable desire for evolution and growing in some way. Um, We can't assume that we're going to be in the same place two years from now. And if that's your desire, I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me. But if you're listening to the leadership podcast here, I imagine that that is not you. But also change can happen as a result of your dreams coming true. And it doesn't necessarily mean um, there has to be something dramatic or traumatic. And that can be the thing. Change is normal, period. And if we think that people around us are supposed to stay the same because we are, that's not fair. Or if we think even the opposite, that people around us are going to be changing and growing at the same time, the same pace, the same way that we are, that is also not fair because these changes have impacts that take different amounts of time that affect different parts of ourselves, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and We've got to, yes, know that change is normal and it can make life more difficult, even when the change is something positive. So I thought I would take the rest of the episode and highlight for you three things, three main reasons or causes why life can be harder when people change. The first one has to do with how you are connected to the people in your life, the people you have bonded with. So if you are in your mid-40s or older, like me, or in your 30s even, you probably have gotten the gist by now that the people that we become friends with when we are much younger or our colleagues that we become close with an earlier time in our career, those are not guaranteed relationships for life. And in fact, if you do still have a strong bond with those people, That is phenomenal. And I have a a reason, a speculation as to why I think that is the case. So if you have bonded at some point in your life with people and somewhere along the line, you are no longer close with that person, there could be a variety of changes with that. I learned when I was diagnosed with ADHD last year and I started learning about neurodivergence, one of the things that happens for neurodivergent people like me is relationships, especially friendships, can be out of sight, out of mind. And it took me a long time for for me to realize, and a good friend of mine pointed this out to me in my 20s so gracefully, it took me a long time to realize that I am the one that will answer the phone if you call me at three in the morning. I am the one that will hear you out and listen to you and hold your hand and be there for you, I am typically not the one to initiate the plans, the conversation. And that caused so much divide in some of my friendships because people did not understand. It it was easy to say, well, you know, she no longer is a teacher at this school. And so therefore, Holly must not value these friendships anymore. Right. Because it's out of sight, out of mind. And I'm terrible at initiating The other part of this, though, is what did the relationship initially get bonded over? 
in those situations, I was bonding with other teachers that I was, yes, in the same building with, but we were bonding over our profession. And when my profession changed, the bond I had was impacted because I was bonding with them over stuff like a career or a hobby. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to highlight it here because when one of those aspects of that stuff changes your hobby, where you work, where you live, your, the, what's going on in your family, when those things shift, the relationship can dissolve in some way, shape, or form. So what should the relationship be based on to ensure that it's going to have longevity? Those relationships need to be based on principles, values. I have found that in my 40s especially, I have kept my close friendships from my years in Florida and made new friendships here in Michigan. And the deepest bonds that I have with people are bonds that are based on, for me, biblical principles, but also my values, the level of authenticity and depth that someone brings to a conversation. Those are things that I love that don't change. It didn't matter if I was single or married. It doesn't matter if my friend went through hell with her family or with their career. We bond on principles. And so we can sustain our friendships and relationships through those changes because we bonded on principles and not just on a hobby or where we work or things like that. The second reason that life can be harder when people change, or not reason, but these are just examples that I'm thinking of, can be jealousy. (laughs) Um, When we see someone in our life going through a change that we wish we could, or we wish that we could relive, that can create jealousy or envy, becoming envious of what that person is creating, becoming envious that they have the courage to take that leap or that they have the courage or not even the courage, the time. Oh my goodness, time. I think about how much time I used to have. Oh, when I was single and living alone compared to being married and having a daughter in a house. Oh my goodness. And that was like a year and a half ago. And now there are points in time where, yeah, I do feel envious of my friends who are already empty nesters. And I'm not saying I want to be an empty nester. I'm not saying I want to be single. That's ridiculous. I don't want those things. But I am envious that people have that kind of time. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. Because I could, but that would mean I don't sleep and that's not okay with me. But anyway, when someone goes through a change, our life can be made harder or more difficult if we choose to be envious or jealous over it and dwell on it. Have a moment of envy, have a moment of jealousy, but can we also reframe that and find a way to use that as inspiration instead? Can I go to that person and say, it is incredible that you are managing a house, a marriage, your children, multiple children. I just have one. And doing all these things. Tell me your secrets. (laughs) Tell me your ways. And those are the kinds of conversations that I'm having when I notice I'm having a moment of envy or jealousy. And the third scenario that I came up with at random, these are no particular order, of why life is harder when people change. And this is a big one. It can because we don't fully relate to what that person is changing in their life. And when we can't relate to someone, meaning... I can't even fathom or try to put myself in their shoes. It is made so much more difficult to accept that new version of this person. So for example, my brother went on a, not went on, but has had a 180 total physical health transformation in the last number of years. And he worked his tail off 
oh, I can't even stress to you the amount of like diligence, attention, workouts, detail oriented commitment to not wavering in his routine or his, you know, a dietary lifestyle, everything. It is unbelievable and very inspirational. And also there are moments where, back to the second thing, yeah, I have envy or jealousy and have all these reasons, but I also can see how much he has shifted and changed and in a positive way. And there are things that he may experience. I'm just using this as an example. This isn't entirely the case of what happens with he and I. We're awesome. We have a great relationship, my brother and I. But there might be some things that he has experienced that I might not understand. Like, why would you choose to do it this way? Well, I would do it this way. And because I can't understand it or relate to it, I'm making it more difficult on our dynamic. I'm making life harder between the two of us in this random made up example. Okay. So if you, for example, on another example here, if you notice someone in your life is going through a massive change, let's say they're becoming a first time parent or they have shifted careers or they're starting a business or their parent has just passed away. If we are waiting for the moment that we can understand fully what they're going through, you could be waiting forever. However, you can say, you know what? I don't fully relate to what you're saying or what you're going through or to the choices that you're making. But I do want to understand to the best of my ability. And the mistake that people make is we may feel like, wow, I relate to this person forever. And then suddenly when someone changes, you or them, and we don't relate to them anymore, our first response or reaction rather to that could be, well, this is this is not working anymore. Why are we hanging out? Why are we spending time together? We don't relate anymore. And being able to relate or not is not an indicator of the sustainability of that relationship or partnership or whatever it is. Because we're not going to be able to relate to each other for our entire life because people are always changing. And sometimes it's you and sometimes it's them and sometimes it's both. Sometimes you're both going the same way. Sometimes you're going in opposite directions. But reviewing this, if you can notice, have you bonded on principles and values that will make the situation, the relationship, the partnership, the business relationship, whatever it is, stronger? Can you notice when you have moments of envy or jealousy because they've gone through something that you aspire to go through? Can you reframe it and use it as an opportunity to learn from them? to ask of them to help pull you up and closer to where you want to be in some way. And worst case scenario, if the two of you just cannot relate to each other in some form any longer, can you at least do your best to ask questions and get curious about what is it like for that person to go through what they're going through and hear them out, aim for understanding not necessarily relating. I hope this was supportive. Like I said, this popped into my mind this morning because I just thought, wow, life goes, <laughs> I sound like Ferris Bueller, life goes so fast, right? <laughs> but, but honestly, it, it does. And we're in 2024 right now and I can't believe we're halfway through July. Like that alone is blowing my mind. Anybody else? Let, drop me a comment if so. Um, but we're all changing And life can be made more difficult with that, or we can enjoy it and find ways to enjoy it. And I hope this episode helps you to do the latter. That is all I have for you for today. So until next time, I will talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. I'm high-fiving you right now because I'm so proud of you for putting your personal growth first. Remember, I believe in you and with faith-filled intention and committed actions, you can lead your life 
purpose, and family to wherever you dream possible. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you'd take 30 seconds to help others discover the show. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, share the show with your friends and family, or screenshot this episode to your Instagram stories and tag me at the Holly Hibbard. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. I'm always here cheering you on. And until next time, stay curious, remain encouraged, and keep empowering yourself. You're doing better than you think, I promise.